So <clears throat> I had one of the great surprises of my life on Friday after coming back to my office after class. The top of my desk was was a copy of Hints for Referees that I had mentioned in class I, that we were searching high and low for. And uh, so uh, now we have it as a handout here. And uh, it's not all that great, but it's not too bad. Um, and it turned out that, that Jack Snoink, who's a student in this class, had received a copy of this uh, from uh, John Hirschberger, uh, who graduated this year. And John probably received it from somebody else, from some other student, and so it's been passed down. So this is an nth generation copy for some end. And I, I don't even recognize the style of commas in this writing, so I'm not sure that it's mine. But it's, uh, but it's close to what I, what I wrote in the 60s, I think. And um, so it summarizes the main, the main points that I said on Friday. Still, I want to. I, I want to belabor them by going, by talking still some more about refereeing today and giving some more examples. Uh, let's see, so, some other announcements though, I guess first. Here we are in November, and uh, November 18th is one of the big deadlines that you should all remember. Um, that I would we would like you to turn in a rough draft, uh, which is, uh, uh, the closer it is to the final draft, the better, because you get better feedback then. But this will, this what you turn in on November 18th, should be a, um, what do you call it, a beta test or something, or, or you know, a, a, a preliminary version of what you what you plan to do uh, uh, afterwards. But we can give you this feedback before it's too late. On uh, 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 before, uh, I mean, we're going to get some some um, response back to you after that. It takes us a little time to grade it, of course, but uh, the, uh, the the final. Uh, Day of uh, I'm not sure exactly the day when did we ever tell you when the term papers are actually due in December? No. Well, it's sort of like when whenever this class would normally have had its final exam, that that would be the day. Um, now we have a another guest lecture coming in December on December 7th. Um, this is Rosalie Stemmer who who has taught uh, copy editing at Stanford in the past and is teaching it uh, at Berk at Berkeley. And um, I told her, and she's a copy editor for the Chronicle. And, and uh, even though Gorbachev is scheduled to come to for the summit meeting on December 7th, she's uh, got somebody to take her place at the Chronicle that day, and she'll come here and, and give uh, and give a talk. And uh, I've asked her to, to give the best 50 minutes of her class at Berkeley on copy editing. And we'll all be in copy editing mode by that time, since the term papers will be due soon. So um, uh, that's uh, that's. Uh, Probably number six in the total of guest lectures in the quarter. Then, Rosalie Stemmer, <clears throat> Stemmer, as in the I don't know something is has only one M anyway. You might say Stemmer if you were a German. Um, another f uh, funny thing crossed my desk on Friday afternoon. I was telling you about people who who mix the order of M and N. When they, you know, from alphabetical order, and so here's a formula that um, I think is rather, rather remarkable. You see, emphasizing the community, or don't you think that's remarkable? Emphas Nobody's laughing. I mean, this, I thought this was hilarious. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, something that I would have written with M N in, in the natural order in, in all cases, but somehow or other. You know, he, he, he doesn't get what? Well, this is multiplication of integers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. This is and uh, what the amazing thing that he he found, by the way, for those who are interested in mathematics, is that this you take this product here. Alpha is the golden ratio, one plus root five over two, and you 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 form this product, and it's and it's associative. It just it, it, there's no no way it should really be associative. I mean, it's uh, there's this rounding error, round to the new, to you know, take the this, the floor for the, and then uh, multiply these together to two uh, two approximate results, and and uh, then and then do that again um, uh, on this sum. It's not distributed, it, but it's a so it's associative. It's it's incredible. But uh, I thought it was funny for now. I was going to spend an hour last night proving that point, proving that it was associative, and five hours later I decided to give up. But uh, I believe it. Um, I proved that another operation was associated that I like better. Uh, <laughs> um, so I wrote to him about it. Well, now, 
refereeing. Um, Herb mentioned the, uh, uh, the, the paper that I, uh, that I wrote under an assumed name uh, in order to get, because I had the chance that since I knew that he was the editor, I knew that, that he could send it out for refereeing without, without giving my, my, my name on the paper. Now, some journals actually do blind refereeing. They, they, they cover up the author's name. And uh, I think one of the AMS journals uh, does this, uh, cover up the author's name when it goes to the referee so that the referee isn't supposed to just say, oh, yes, so-and-so really knows his stuff and I'll just pass it without even, without even looking at it and somebody else is some unknown I never heard of. Um, so um, um, what right do they have to publish anything and so on. Um, now, there is, a de there is some influence, sociologists have found that there is some influence on the names of papers when you're, when you're re re reviewing them. Uh, I mean, they did a, an experiment I read about some years ago, and I believe that, it's, uh, that it was reported correctly, although well, you can't believe everything you read in the paper, that they took, that they took um, uh, like fifth and sixth grade uh, papers that were written in English, and, and, they, and they had them graded by two, by two different groups. And in one case, they just changed the name on the paper. Somebody, who, somebody whose name was, was uh, you know, you know was, was changed from Herbert to Sam or something like this. And, and, and um, they found that uh, they were getting a, a definite uh, a full grade difference. I mean, certain people with, with certain names were just, would, would get a C instead of a B with the identical paper. And it was, and it was consistent, very strong statistical correlation. Um, um, now, um, so people s seem to be influenced by their, their preconception as to whether what a paper is going to be like just by the author's name. It's an amazing thing, but it seems to be true. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, I, I chose in this case a, uh, a name that was based, I mean, anybody who, who reads Agatha Christie would realize that UN Owen is, uh, is, a, uh, is, a, is a pen name uh, from, from the, uh, the, what is it called? the. Uh, um, and then there were none. The, um, but uh, uh, I made it Ursula just, you know, in order to try to get extra discrimination. Uh, I mean, certainly a, a woman has no right to publish anything deep in, in computer science, right? Um, and, uh, well, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, uh, uh, so, so we did this. And, and I, I got to explain some of the background for this. Because see, this, date, this was dated July 81. Here's a, here's a letter I wrote in April 81. It says, Dear Bruce, I was surprised to find that my paper was accepted with no referees' reports. Um, anyway, I reviewed it myself and found that it needed to be improved. <laughs> and, uh, and so you know, I started having to get my own referees um, uh, where I would uh, where I wrote to, uh, uh, you know, well, typically I also will send to people that I think are, are knowledgeable in the field um, anyway, because I think they might be interested in, in a preprint. Um, and so I had to make, but anyway, I got no, so, so here I send a paper and, um, you know, I got a postcard back saying it will appear in such and such issue. Well, uh, that's not, uh, that's not good form. Um, here's the letter I got from, from, uh, um, man in UC UCLA who, uh, uh, who I sent the revised version of my paper and he, so he reread it and he made more comments. So he gave me a referee report, in other words, after, even after I had, had sent this, the revised edition, I, I made more corrections on Gallic proofs. I had to, I had to um, uh, go do this my, myself. Um, literate programming, I showed you that article about literate programming in the computer journal. Um, so I got back, he says, Thank you for enclosing your paper, Literate Programming. I shall be delighted to include this in the computer journal at the earliest opportunity. I got no referee report on that. Uh, but, and also, I sent that paper to, uh, uh, to Wirth and, and Dykstra and Nauer and uh, got no answer from them either. <laughs> they don't have time to read that kind of stuff. So, so uh, that particular paper, I had no feedback uh, on at all. Um, had to just take take my chances. It could have been better with I, if I had somebody looking over and, and saying, "Don, work harder." Um, this was the report that I got on the um, on the paper that was sub submitted by Ursula, and um, uh, well, it's um, uh, generally. Um, 
it's it's something that helped me to, to you know to look at to, to see the detail I just want to show you the idea then suggestion of corrections uh, um, um, so here uh, I pointed out a gap in my exposition that I had just given letters L W D G without any um, without any uh, comment as to why as to why those letters are appropriate and suggest here to call it something like that um, uh, I'm not sure what D and G mean anyway and then similarly here so so in other words this was a good good suggestion to improve the exposition uh, here I have feedback from a motivated reader what what more can you want before you publish something and see some, you know it's, it's what you find the question that people are going to ask here here are uh, you know technical typographical error I had a five instead of a four um, subscript missing and a variable misnamed and now here he had a, a change and, and here it's wrong I mean I said no here I mean it is my own writing here it turned out that that um, uh, he he thought this should be should be this he's wrong um, but um, still there was a reason why he thought it was wrong so I had to add some other sentence you know to, to make to, to clarify that that this is sort of a sick you know that this really is this way even though you might think something else so I had to, so so that caused me even though the, the referee is wrong um, he, you know in fact there's a few more places here um, uh, and uh, uh, here it says uh, in fact I made a comment to myself that this was a bug in my first draft in other words I uh, he's he's uh, simplified he's he's doing something which seems seems right but but turns out to be wrong when you when you when you look at it. It's kind of subtle, and so now I. But I, I realized that I ought to add more more explanation in the paper at that point. Okay. So so uh, when you get a referee report, also you even when a referee is wrong, um, the moral is uh, uh, he was he was not the only person in the world who's going to read that and 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 make the same wrong conclusion. Um, in fact, he's the kind of person that you probably. Are, are, are hoping most to reach in your article, so you want to uh, add a little redundancy to, so that um, uh, so that the reader will understand that. Okay. What's this one now? Here's another one that comes from '81, the same year when I was having trouble finding finding referees. Well, here I got a good one because I I went to a journal of number theory. It's a it's a, uh, a, uh, a highly specialized uh, journal, and again I'm. I'm an outsider. I'm not uh, ordinarily. That's not my 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 full my my work is number theory. I just happened to have solved the problem that the number theory is proposed, and I so I wanted to to um, submit it to the proper journal. But now here it says the main result of the simple formula, which the proof is not very complicated. It's not unlikely the result is already known. In fact, I mean there's millions of number theorists in the world, and, <laughs> and uh, but I haven't been able to spot it in the literature, nor has Henrik Anstead. Who've been able to find anyone able to answer the question among the people he has asked? Therefore, I'm submitting it in hopes that your referees will know the true story. Well, so I, I'm, you know, I'm here. I am in '81, trying to, my best to, to encourage to get good referee reports because I've been having these uh, experiences where, where nobody's refereeing my my work anymore. Um, but um, uh, now you might also say that I'm exploiting the system. I mean, here I am, you know. I'm I'm too busy to, to look to go to the library and look and, and look this up, you know. Um, and uh, what if everybody would do this and let the referees do all the work, you know? I mean, this is in this kind of a lazy approach. Well, uh, no, I don't think. I mean, here I, I mean, I I I made a serious check. I talked to I talked to uh, uh, to leading people. I you know I looked uh, as I can, but the literature and such such things is very vast. And the only way to really solve information retrieval problems on technical results being new. Is really to go to the people who are the world authorities on this stuff, and that and those people, that's part of their their service to the world is to be a world authority on that thing. I mean, you're going to be a world authority on something too, and people are going to want you know going to come to you, and you're going to know this, and uh, that's the only way really to do it. There's, there's no no perfect indexing system to find this uh, this material, and. Um, and uh, so it's a cooperative effort, and it takes place. I think it's one of the ways in which, uh, which is one of the one of the nice ways in which science advances. I mean, uh, co cooperation through uh, through correspondence as well as through uh, uh, working um, uh, in the same lab for a certain salary or something like this. You know, this was something that we do as a joint enterprise, and 
and um, it's, it works as long as there aren't enough, uh, you know, a lot of dumb clucks sort of spoiling it. Uh, and I, I, you can imagine all kinds of scenarios in which this kind of system would break down, but it, it does tend to work. And, so, uh, so what's your estimate, your subjective estimate of the probability that the result has to exist before you'll resort to that? Oh, uh, what do you mean? I'm, I'm sorry, the, the result has to exist? So, so, you know, if, if you think that there's a 90 percent chance that this result doesn't exist, then you'll do this. But I'm saying if I think that it's, that it's almost certainly well known, then I would, then I would uh, probably, then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a good shake to find out. I mean, there, I, you know, I know how to use a library, and, I, and, there's, uh, and there's histories of number theory. Uh, Dick, Dixon's history of number theory, for example, three volumes that, that went through um, uh, thousands and thousands of papers and, ca and gives them in capsule form. And so you can look there for, and find all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. But, um, uh, you, you, you know, you, as, and as you grow older, you learn who, where you might naturally find something, uh, some results. And other ones, like I wrote a letter to uh, Levesque about a number of the, there's a, See if somebody wants to surprise me with something on my office desk after class today. There's a there's a theorem that we had in the, that uh, we had on an old exam. It was uh, it was this: if uh, the greatest integer, which we call the floor of m x1 plus plus m x n, is equal to the greatest in the sum of the greatest integers. Mx for all m, x, x1 through xn are, in, are, are are real numbers, and m and this is supposed to happen for hold for all n, for, so this is for all m integers m, uh, if and only if um, at most one of the x's is an integer, all but one x, xk is an integer. Now. And uh, we, we had this on a final exam once, and, I, and, I, and in this book I'm writing Concrete Math, uh, I want to give credit to where this came from. And when the uh, TAs uh, gave the answer to the final exam, they said they got this problem from the Math Monthly. And um, I looked th through the Math Monthly problems. Uh, I spent about 10 hours so far looking through uh, uh, the previous issues starting in 1972. Going back, I got back to about 1963. Uh, at all the problems in the Math Monthly and didn't see it. Now, Math Monthly has been published since 1890s. Uh, so I not going you know, and I, I wrote this, I wrote to, to Scott uh, Drysdale, who, who was the PA, and he said he doesn't remember, but he did remember that it was in from, from the monthly, he saw it somewhere. Um, what? Maybe it's Math Magazine, yeah, so if, oh, that's interesting, yeah. But, uh, so if, you, if anybody, so I wrote to a number theorists asking if they knew where, where the, that result is. They said, hey, that's a neat result. I never saw it before. It sounds pretty interesting. Um, so got that letter today saying they don't know. So I can't retrieve, haven't been able to retrieve that. Okay, so the, the main thing is, though, I, you, 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 you should give it, you know, a reasonable shot and not just be real, real sloppy about this and let, let, let everybody else do the work. Um, yeah, and we, you know, I put in a lot of time re re reviewing other people's papers, and this is my chance to get some some of their time back. You know, it's it's only fair. And um, uh, as I say, it makes uh, science advance be better to do it this way. Now, uh, so I got a letter back from um, the editor, and um, he said uh, I sent it to a referee and also read it himself. Had a few minor comments, and he. Makes so he, he gives me feedback right away, and then he says, "But the question whether it's no will have to be answered by someone better acquainted with the literature." And I'm, so he sends to a referee. Now he gives me these comments here, and here here he corrects typographical errors uh, in the paper, and then and uh, these are uh, um, I, I mean I'm guilty of that. I should have I should have proofread the paper better before I sent it to him. Um, Oh, here's one thing, though. He says uh, one could give a stronger result, and here he gives an error. He gives a so so he says um, why not give a stronger result? I, I gave an error like two to the minus n, and he says there's this irrational number defined by this equation, which my argument will still prove a stronger result. And the point is that I I knew that that I could prove a stronger result, but I didn't think it was anywhere near best possible. So I thought that for the expository purpose, there was no point in giving the best error that I could get from my method, which I felt was, was 
was, was, was sort of weak anyway. The main idea was to get some kind of an error term, but not, not the best possible, and, unless I had a, 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 a a, a much sharper method that I was using. So, but it proves that he read the paper. I mean, he, you know, it's, uh, but this is, this is an example of what um, I would, I think, uh, uh, George Poyer would call a, um, a facile generalization. There's, there's, there's two kinds of ways to generalize results. One is, um, one is what he calls uh, uh, soft, and one is what he calls hard, or something like this. One, and there's the, there's the kind that you can generalize by just looking at the argument, changing nothing, but just, but just seeing how. What uh, what what that same argument will support in if you in if you uh, uh, you know what axioms does it really depend on and you define those axioms and so on and anybody can go through that sort of sort of like a machine and and generalize the result but but then there's a but then there's a, what it's that I think it's I, yeah well let's see now this is in the preface to um, um, problems and solve problems and solutions in um, in analysis, the one that Herb Wolf mentioned. Um, it's a wonderful quote, actually. And it, there's there's a similar comment like that in um, in uh, his book on um, patterns of plausible inference, something like that. How to solve it? That's the shorter book. I don't think it's in there. Um, anyway, this is uh, the facile generalization that has and. Uh, but then there's a, but and this is what the editor supplied there, <laughs> uh, which I did, but I didn't believe that it was worth it in this case uh, to to do it. Sometimes it is. Um, it, then there's the uh, the real generalization where you find a, a pattern that's of, that is of significance, and then you and you and you give it a, a proper name and terminology, and you and then you uh, develop the theory for it. Now that those are much harder to come by, and and uh, those uh, that's real mathematics. I don't know how. <laughs> Um, now, I got the referee report back then from um, uh, f uh, from the editor, and, and uh, it came June '82. So he apologized about how, how long it took, and then he quotes from the referee report. Um, uh, so uh, the, it's uh, it's strictly related to some deep results of Erdős Sushin Turan, and later of these. Here are the main references, and he gives the formulas that. Um, that are that, that are related and 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 so on, um, uh, but they are it, it, the results aren't the same. So uh, so we're talking about similar problems, but not but not identical. So, he, so in other words, he, he found this this referee found found some um, some papers that I'm sure would be very difficult for me to retrieve in a million years. Uh, in these uh, you know here we go 1958. Uh, uh, there's one of this is one of thousands of math journals and so on. Um, a title called "Remarks on the Theory of Diophantine Approximation." I mean, no, no, no clue in the title what's exactly in it. Um, uh, uh, but here we found, through the referees' help, a, a relevant f uh, f uh, reference. Now, <clears throat> um, and then um, he said, then the referee says. Uh, he looked carefully, then he didn't find anything closer, but he suggests that I ask Erdős, or better yet, Sprintsuk, who was acquainted with the Russian literature, if you want to make absolutely sure, do you want me to do this, you know? And so, um, uh, and so I said yes. <laughs> um, but uh, he's, um, you know, if you're more interested in speedy publication or being sure of the existing literature. Well, well, uh, it turned out I said, go ahead, ask Sprintsuk. And, uh, and meanwhile, uh, some some Dutch mathematicians, uh, uh, using the using my paper, were were able to generalize the result, sharpen the methods, and get a much much uh, much stronger theorem, which got published before my my paper did. But uh, that's okay. Uh, I still wanted to to uh, I still wanted to, to uh, you know to, to know my, my my argument was simpler, and I got a I got a weaker result, but it was. As it turned out, you know, by using stronger methods, you could get a stronger result. But that's okay. It's still nice to know simple methods once in a while. Work. So finally, he says, I finally heard from Sprinzel, who finds the results in your paper quite interesting and new and recommends pub publication. So it's finally getting published. Here's the November 82. Um, and so that did get pub that did get published then. And, and uh, okay, now here's another one, a recent uh, a recent referee report. Um, <clears throat> This was uh, July '85, um, and so wait a minute—is this in order here? 
Okay. Well, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Um, so I don't see, show the letter. But anyway, I, I um, had previously worked with this editor, and I got a and I got a terrific referee report from him in a previous in a previous thing. So I. So here I'm complimenting him, saying, boy, you found a terrific referee on this paper of mine. I revised it. And uh, since the referee's comments led to considerable improvements in the exposition and results, you may want to run it by him or her again. The last section in particular has been completely rewritten. On the other hand, I did try to check these results carefully, so I won't mind if you decide to save time by forwarding it directly to the printer. Uh, the thing is, uh, in this case, uh, this is one of the examples I wanted to show you where the referee uh, actually improved the theorem and uh, and remain anonymous and uh, you know just uh, just as part of the, the cooperative enterprise of journal publishing uh, says uh, here's a here's a theorem that uh, ought to be published in this paper of Knuth even though and you know even though uh, uh, he's uh, uh, you know he's got this good result now if he were real je jealous of his own of all of his own work he would he would go and publish his own paper about this thing but uh, that's not not typically the way it's done, and so here's a um, here's the uh, the report, and, um, and in fact I had two referee reports. This one, but this one was by some master. I have no idea who it is, of course. Maybe if I studied the typewriter, I could I could uh, I could work it out. Um, but um, <clears throat> here it suggests if there's an easy proof to a remark I made, uh, it should be given. Uh, because he he tried to verify it and uh, and it took and it took a while and uh, and uh, I I don't remember the details of that um, but uh, now here is where here's what I'm talking about it says it seems to me that if we have so, so and so this is a paper on coding theory we can always construct a scheme that that does it and so he he gives me a brand new construction which generalizes the special case that I that I had for for uh, uh, h equals three or four or something like that. And, uh, and his argument is very nicely worked out combinatorially here. So he, so he gives me this, this, um, this nice way of, you know, you know sort of a, a geometric pattern that I hadn't had. I, I didn't realize this way of looking at the problem. He gives me the ge geometric pattern as sort of as a, as a way of blocking lines when you, that every, every way of going through, from going through here has to cross through one of these dots or something like that. He had a real nice argument there. And, um, so, um, uh, he, uh, uh, so I was really glad, of course, to get a referee report like that because it, it allowed me to take my special case for h equals three or four, which or eight or whatever it was, and uh, and show a, a general construction. And so then at the end of the article, I, um, of course, added at acknowledgement um, for several pena trading observations that substantially improved this paper. I guess I should have been even more explicit. Um, the uh, uh, when the thing came out in print, um, <laughs> the author we just thank an honest for for several printing that substantially improved this correspondence. And uh, b by the way, the uh, editor, the uh, referees at IEEE uh, are are terrific, but their copy editors aren't aren't that good. Um, but they but this was okay. I thought, but uh, but the, you know, technically speaking, this went in the correspondence part of the journal rather than the papers part of the journal and uh, somebody asked about that on Friday that's why I brought this here to you know, somebody said what about letters section well these are certain these are refereed also they're just shorter and so they put them in the, under correspondence um, uh, but it's uh, it's a little bit funny too because uh, it, it it's actually a one-to-one -one correspondence that I was talking about and and so I I so I got to use correspondence with a double meaning here which is very nice um, but uh, I told you I told you a few weeks ago that this journal IEEE on, journal on coding theory has a way of uh, doesn't use apostrophes when they say zeros and ones. I, I, I this was something we were in the midst of some other discussion, but uh, um, wanted to re, re, so people used to when when people used to talk about the 50s, they used to say uh, 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 apostrophe. Five zero apostrophe s, first apostrophe for leaving out the 19, the second apostrophe for making it a genitive, uh, possessive, uh, belonging to the, to, no no for, sorry for forming the plural of a of a symbol, uh, the second second apostrophe was to form a, sim, a plural of a symbol to make 50s. Uh, okay so now, the, uh, uh, both apostrophes are left out in the 80s. 
and and uh, uh, even in the 80s when we talk about the 50s. And uh, uh, except in the Palo Alto Weekly a few weeks ago, uh, they talked about the um, apostrophe 60s. They left out the, the, first, the second apostrophe, but not the first. And more often, people leave out the first and not the second. But they're both going off now, in, 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 typically. Um, and uh, uh, still, when you're when you're forming a, a plural of other things, um, like you uh, you dot the i's and cross the t's, uh, you uh, uh, and you you uh, uh, have to talk about um, a's and b's in a formula or something like that. Uh, uh, still, usually put the uh, put the apostrophe in. Uh, and I said at the time that I didn't think the IEEE transactions on information theory, which talks about coding all the time, has zeros and ones all over the place. I didn't think that they that they uh, uh, I put apostrophes in when they gave a plural of zero. Well, what I hadn't remembered until I looked back at this paper that they actually um, uh, spell it out, zeros and ones, uh, Z-E-R-O-E-S. And I, and I believe that's wrong. I mean. Uh, they're copied it or just even though they work with it all the time um, you're talking about a zero as a symbol not as a not as a, a, a number and uh, I believe the right rule is that you spell out a, a small number if it's used as a number but not if it's used as a as a symbol and uh, I don't have the example of the page here but on the galley proof but there was a but it came up where where uh, the, where you know I, it, it just made made the thing very ambiguous because here's the word one in the sentence and one is also a pronoun that that uh, you know is used in English to mean one doesn't does this or something like this and so uh, uh, or, or you know one and something so I couldn't um, so I had to rewrite several sentences because of this uh, well, I was perfectly. I was referring to you know changes zero to a one or something like that. I mean, what the sentence would have made perfectly good sense if it had shown as a symbol, but uh, otherwise it looked like a looked like a semicolon. So I had to so I had to substitute the word unity for one. Now now this is often done in mathematical writing. You know, you say as um, as uh, as x approaches unity or something like this, or the radius is unity, because. They find out that if you say one in those contexts, it, it reads funny it, because the one has this, this multiple meanings in English. And um, uh, if you can use the symbol one, you're, you're better off than having to say unity, which is funny, which is a sort of a funny uh, uh, mathematical convention just to get around this this, this rule. Well, enough, enough about that, though. Um, OK, now let's see. Um, here's a. Another comment um, in a paper that came out. Let's see. I, uh, this one says um, title. This had, a, had an interesting comment from a referee. It was a neat. Um, the title is ambiguous without a hyphen. Optimal font caching. Uh, but hyphenation may not be appropriate. My favorite hyphenation problem, this is what I liked about it, appeared in a technical paper where the author wrote about common sense amplifiers. <laughs> and I think he needed a common sense amplifier to write this correctly <laughs> as a common sense amplifier. No. With the present title, I was very interested in learning about optimal fonts and found no discussion about such animals. The title were optimal font caching. It's not clear if there are a sufficient number of font cachers around to be interested in it, but in fact, there are, but um, in the event the ambiguity issue is present, the authors are free to find a suitable way to correct the problem. Um, and uh, so we changed the, uh, the the title of the paper based on this to uh, uh, to in introduce another word, prepaging, which is uh, actually for the this is transactions on programming languages and systems. Uh, so systems people know the word prepaging, and this is the the um, uh, this is a, this is actually a, a keyword that we should have had in the title. Anyway, and um, so anyway, now this this was a, otherwise a fairly lightweight referee report. They didn't they didn't dig into to some of the problems in the paper that they could have. But uh, um, you know, look at this. It's this thoroughly written. Uh, this is um, uh, not uh, now. Here's the other the other referee report we got. So I don't want to give the impression that you always get one only one report. You know. Uh, um, Depends on the journal you submit to as to how many referees they typically do. And when I was, and or, or when I was editor, I would sometimes get get only one re 
report if I thought that that one that one would be sufficient because the because of the subject matter or something like that, or if it was more controversial or a longer paper or something, get more or something. I don't know. But here is another another report that I got. And here it had all kinds of references to to what the referee thought were were relevant references. And well, in my opinion, again, this these these references were were not relevant. And I and I looked and looked them over again to double check my my opinion on this. And so I finally decided probably not to cite most of these because they they were talking about a different problem. And still, it's you know, it's an honest mistake that you have to realize other readers are going to make. Now, the paper itself, I brought with me because I wanted to show you the it starts to answer the question of how to make how to describe a complicated algorithm with sort of what I'm going to say. How can you get across the feeling of a complicated algorithm by giving giving traces of the way it runs or something like that? The I said talked about animation of algorithms the other day. It takes a lot of work to do that. But, you know, can you get the effect across in a in a journal article rather than somebody actually playing with playing with an act or going ahead and implementing it? Well, we well, this is one of the more extensive examples that I did of trying to understand to to present this. And so let me give you a little background on the on this, what this paper is now. I was working on typesetting and we and we have a manuscript has come off that that has been processed by tech. And now we have to type we have to take it onto a machine that has a small memory for storing its fonts. So we have to we have a big, big computer and we have a small typesetting machine. The typesetting machine can store about 100 characters in its memory at any one time. And so the so the big machine is supposed to you cash these things. In other words, they're supposed to decide which 100 characters are in the small machine. And periodically it says, forget character number 32, replace it by the following character. And and the question is to try to do this in the optimum way. So that now we have the whole the whole manuscript in front of us. And so we and we have time at the end of every line to change a few characters while the machine is backing is is moving its motors around. And so we have time on on line 38 of a page to load five characters of boldface that we're going to need on line 50. And and so this is this is called pre paging in the sense of operating systems, which would say that if you if you had time and you knew that a user was in a few minutes was going to want a certain page from the disk to be present in memory, you could bring it in now. Maybe, you know, if you had if there were if the disk was 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 idle instead of demand paging, which is waiting until somebody demanded the page and then and then stop and work on some other some other job and 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 then resume when you got it. So so we so we have the whole text of the of of the manuscript in in our you know, we know the future, unlike the operating system, people who doesn't know maybe what the user is going to do unless the user has has some, you know, is using a sequential file or something. We might want to know that he's going to bring in the next the next record. In this case, we know the future. We know what characters are going to be coming up on line 60, even when we're doing line 30. And so so that's what this paper is about, trying to to say when you have time to bring in a limited number of of things, which are the best ones to bring in? And can you prove that they're optimum in some sense? Now, now, how do you explain the effectiveness of the of such an algorithm that is? And so, you know, we go through a long presentation of the and then we give algorithms here. As I mentioned, I start I I've been using a Pascal like style with a sort of a web indication also with presenting algorithms in in these publications now. But how do you. So we presented the algorithm. We proved it correct. And we showed some certain kinds of optimality. 
But now we got empirical tests. We, we, wanted, to make, we wanted to test it in, um, in practice. And, um, uh, and so, so I discussed the models that we used and the, and the, and the, sample, the samples that we did. But, but it, it really has to be done on a, re, on a, on a realistic job. You, know, you can't, on a, something like this, uh, uh, no, no uh, random model is, a, is uh, appropriate. Things are too complicated. You uh, you want to really discuss it on a, on something that's typical of real life. And so, what I did was I gave a, an, a, a so I constructed a test file consisting of five pages, which look which which do a lot of different kinds of typesetting. And here was page one, and here was page two. This was based on excerpts of uh, of uh, volume two of the Art of Computer Programming. Actually, this uh, this sample comes from the test pages that I made when I was designing tech. I uh, I went through volume two and I and I uh, and on page one I copied a lot of it and then I got to stuff that I that I already knew how to do so then I went to page 50 or something like this where there was an algorithm and uh, every and every time something new came along a different aspect of typesetting then I would uh, then I would say how should I write this in tech and I'm designing tech as I'm doing this I mean this this was also this turned out was also my my test, this particular page, was actually the test case that I that I used as a as a sitting down uh, over one night and two nights, uh, thinking out what the tech language should be. I would try to say, huh, what what kind of a source language would I like to generate these pages? And uh, and then I then I then, then I I had the source language, and I said, okay, now let me implement it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then actually after I implemented it, a year later, I used this page also for testing it, and then we tested it on. Uh, so I had this file around, sort of uh, as an example of uh, all kinds of different typographic conventions. So here you, you get to the bottom of page one, and uh, then all of a sudden at the top of page two you got um, you got uh, nine point caps coming in, even though you've been working in ten point size type, and so you have to bring in all these caps but before you get to the end of, of page one, and so on. And uh, and there's the tables and rules, all these different things are coming in here made a fairly good good example of a test of a test program and then and it continues on here so it has math formulas and and uh, quite a variety of different um, of, of different uh, things can happen what is this three 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 this subsection doesn't exist finally okay well anyway this was um, this was uh, um, the idea so now how do we describe how well the method works well so now I describe now we can we we, we want to set the this, this thing up by by simulating different uh, uh, different uh, speeds of the of the of the typesetter and different um, amount of of internal memory inside the typesetter. So we can we can find out so we can sort of shut off the heuristics here. We can say that the the typesetter doesn't have any kind of preload characters at all. How many page faults do you get then, or how many character faults do you get then? Uh, or what if you have infinite memory uh, and, and uh, you know all the various different uh, 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 different things could happen? And so I, so so I my table here, um, which is described, there's a there are different conditions on on uh, where on how much look ahead you you you, uh, you you have time to do like L infinity meant inf infinite look ahead L zero mean, means no look ahead no prepaging, and um, and so then we we count how many times. When we did this figure, how many times we had a character fault and had to stop and wait? What's fault? Uh, fault means that uh, that uh, uh, the character that it needs for this line is not present inside the memory. So you have to go and, and, and well, you have to go to the end of the line and then come back and do it and, do, and load some more characters and, and do it again. That's what that's what it is actually. But the yeah, so it's a, it's um, you know it's kind of, it was. Um, how hard to explain the effectiveness of the algorithm, but my best solution to this was to try to present it, you know, by a, a, some numerical table that would then and then discuss it uh, afterwards. But then I put a, an asterisk in here saying anomalous values that are surprisingly low. Uh, some for some reason, I would have expected, like here, if we if we increase the memory, we should we should not also increase the number of faults. Uh, uh, that's an I mean uh, somehow having more room. Should, you sh should be better, but uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the uh, uh, people who, who work with uh, with these uh, parallel these these uh, algorithms know that sometimes you can uh, that that you get this 
this monotonicity goes the other way. So you, you, you have more processors and, you can, and it takes longer to, to, to run a job uh, because you make a bad mistake in the beginning or something like this. And, and in this case, we have a situation where the characters have variable size. And so uh, you've got to not only, you, you don't have, only have 100 characters, but you have to fit them in uh, into slots and, and they, they might, uh, it might not work nicely if you if um, uh, if if they come in a certain order, things like this. Very complicated. But anyway, uh, now, but the main thing I did in order to describe the algorithm was to was to was to typeset this diagram, and this diagram was typeset as and it shows the the actual behavior of the algorithm. There were two main main ideas in the, in the look ahead procedure, and I I, I don't want to dwell on, the, on, the, on it, but essentially the, the, the farther you are here, the more lines you are ahead. So, so your, 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 your memory is loaded up, up until, uh, uh, I mean, I think as this line coming down here is, is consuming characters, and this line below it is, is loading characters. And, and it's just, when those lines come together, you get a fault because uh, you haven't been able to preload them fast enough for the consumer. And so you, you try to get ahead. Uh, as much as you can by taking, uh, like at the beginning of a page, you have you have a, the motors are, are are moving to are moving to, to to part of the film, and so you've got time to load of enough characters to get all the all the uh, uh, you know, to get you started, and and then uh, you try to, and so you have a little time to to load more in, and uh, and uh, so this is what this diagram was was then based on. On uh, you know, uh, computer outputs the details of how the algorithm performed, and then I could typeset a diagram by typesetting little lines, and also then I would then showing where you are in the pro in that in that sample, like you say exercises or you know when, when you got to exercises that's where that's that's where the the horizontal line is here when when you get to this part which says exercises. See? So so you can so that's the idea of this of this diagram, and and. Um, so uh, um, I guess the moral of it, of, of, of it is that uh, uh, now with, uh, with the computer typesetting tools that we have, we can make accurate figures that would be unthinkable. You know, it would have cost a fortune to get such a figure done, and you would never been, have the patience to get the data and do it right um, uh, before. So now we could, we could hook up the, uh, the algorithm to the uh, to, to the typesetting system and, and, and actually give some, some kind of a pictorial output of the algorithm. And there's many more examples of this can be, can be thought of. <clears throat> um, um, so then, uh, uh, so, so uh, giving, giving some kind of a snapshot picture, uh, some kind of a way of, of visualizing the algorithm is, uh, uh, each algorithm has its own specific problems, but you look at it, uh, enough examples, you begin to you get a you get a feeling. Um, I I'll show you on on Wednesday uh, uh, an example of exactly how not to do it. Uh, it was the first paper that I published in the communication of the ACM. Um, it's my second pu publication. My first publication was in Mad Magazine, but that's th that was different. I didn't draw the figures for that. Uh, but this one. <laughs> But this one um, is an example of the wrong way to do it. And then I want to—I'll show a couple of more examples of uh, of this idea of trying to to, uh, to give a um, uh, description of an algorithm uh, by uh, what do you call it, um, play by play or snapshots. And um, if anybody else has better ideas, uh, they're always you know they're always welcome. This, this is a tough problem. Excuse me. You want to see my first publication? Okay, I'll bring the first publication. All right. Okay.